As humans, we are always on the lookout for new discoveries that can inspire us and make us question our place in the universe. Fascinating discoveries have been made right here on Earth that remind us of how much we still must learn about our planet and its inhabitants. Every day, we learn something new about our planet. Sometimes these discoveries are small, like a new type of flower that blooms in the rainforest. Other times they are much more significant, like the discovery of a new species of animal or an archaeological structure. Whatever the case may be, each new discovery provides us with another piece of the puzzle that is our world. Thanks to these ongoing discoveries, we are constantly learning more about ourselves and our place on Earth. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three incredible discoveries. The Hidden Plane There are a few places you might expect to find a plane, but you would be forgiven for thinking the last place on Earth you might stumble upon one is in the middle of the thick jungles of Papua New Guinea. So, how did a World War II B-17E bomber end up in one of the most unlikely spots on the globe? Well, the story spans decades, countries and even continents, but we can first begin in 1941, in the period when the USA entered the Second World War. The United States had remained uninvolved in the war effort between the Allies and the Axis up until this point. That was until the attack on Pearl Harbor, which drove them to join arms with the side that would ultimately win the war. While the US sent many soldiers to fight the Nazis in Europe, it was also focused on dealing with the threat of the Japanese Empire after the Pearl Harbor attack, and the US subsequently sent hundreds of thousands of men to fight in what is known as the Pacific War. While not as commonly thought of in comparison to the combat in Europe, at least 10,000 US men lost their lives in the Pacific War. During the fight in the Pacific in 1942, one specific plane, a B-17E Flying Fortress, was sent on a raiding mission to the then-occupied island of New Britain in Papua New Guinea. While the plane suffered damage from the defences of the Japanese forces, the plane did not crash from damage alone. In fact, the plane was forced to make an emergency crash landing due to the plane running totally out of fuel. The Flying Fortress was supposed to land back in Australia, but instead the B-17E nosedived directly into the Agayambo Swamp on February 23, 1942. The plane's captain, Captain Fred Eaton, and the rest of the crew survived and was forced to withstand the harsh wilderness of the New Guinean jungle. For six weeks, the men managed to fend off starvation, the sweltering heat as well as diseases in an unfamiliar region, and eventually managed to reunite with American troops. Despite the whereabouts of the men being resolved, the plane lays in the New Guinea jungle for decades afterwards, leaving many to wonder of its condition. Fast forward to the 1980s and plans to retrieve the relic bomber began to move forward thanks to the efforts of pilot and collector David Talashe. It would only be in 2010 that the infamous bomber, known in plain circles as the Holy Grail, would eventually be recovered. Seen as the most uniquely preserved of the world's four recovered B-17E airplanes and given the nickname Swamp Ghost, is a fascinating time capsule preserved from one of the most historically significant periods in human history. Amateur historians uncover long-lost World War I tunnel in France where 270 Germans were buried alive. During the Battle of the Chemin de Dame in 1917, several hundred German soldiers took refuge in an underground passage to escape the French guns. They didn't make it out alive and this location became an enigma for more than a century. Halfway up the Cron Hill, 20 meters under the heavy soil of the Aisne, Covered by a thick shroud of limestone and sand await some 250 bodies of German soldiers buried in a tunnel a century ago. The position and the very existence of this tunnel have long been a mystery, an enigma finally solved in rather unorthodox conditions, which is a story within a story. The story is more than a hundred years old and, as the Volksbund, which is a German association that cares for German war graves, well remembers, it is one of the countless tragedies of the First World War. On May 4, 1917, more than 200 German soldiers were buried in the Winterberg Tunnel, 
near the Ladies' Road by a French shell that closed the entrance. As the oxygen ran out, the men suffocated and lost their lives, or took their own lives. Only three soldiers held out long enough before they were rescued, a day before the ridge was occupied by French troops. One of these survivors, Carl Fisser, left a harrowing account of that agony. Everyone was begging for water, but in vain. A comrade lay on the ground beside me and croaked in a broken voice for someone to load his firearm. The names of the victims have been known since then, and their fate was documented, but their bodies were never recovered. Both the German Association and the French National Office of Former Combatants and War Victims with French archaeologists have been searching for years for the famous tunnel, researching archives, checking documents, and comparing historical maps with current topography to pinpoint the exact location of the tunnel. Now, at last, they believe they have found it. The site where the men of the 111th Reserve Infantry Regiment from the southern Baden region suffocated during the Second Battle of Ain and would have been on a wooded hillside near the French town of Cron, 160 kilometers northeast of Paris. Alain Malinowski and his son Pierre, amateur historians, found the entrance to the tunnel and carried out an illegal excavation at the site they had identified. There they found firearms, ammunition, bayonets and hundreds of gas mask canisters, as well as the remains of two soldiers. Pierre then plugged the hole and contacted the authorities. German and French experts have agreed to carry out further technical investigations in the spring. The risks posed by ammunition and chemical residues, which can come to light through earthworks, must be taken into account. When the results of these investigations are available, legal bodies will decide together with community representatives on the future of the Winterberg Tunnel. Educator helps rescue man lost in Santa Fe National Park for nearly two weeks. Hiking is a common pastime, especially in the USA, where there is an abundance of stunning national parks and hiking trails. Something you would never think you would find on a hiking trail would be what John Utzi found when he was hiking in Santa Fe National Forest. Hiking with his two children, John Utzi set out on a normal hike as he had many times before. However, this time was different. They began to hear noises as they were a few miles into the hike. After a few minutes, they realized it was in fact a man calling for help nearby. In total, it took a reported 20 whole minutes of back and forth shouting until they eventually found the man. Just off a steep hillside was a visibly injured and shaken man who continued to tell Utzi and his children that he had been stuck there for two weeks. Describing the lost man, Utzi recalled some physical details. His lips were incredibly chapped and bleeding, his tongue had swelled up, and not only was he visibly gaunt, he was barely making sense and was clearly delirious from the time he had spent lost. Leaving all the food and water they had with the man, they began the hike back to get him help. Three miles later, John Utzi informed the relevant authorities, and firefighters from Santa Fe were on the scene within the matter of an hour. Utzi provided the GPS location of where they found the lost man, and the firefighters went to find him. Unfortunately, this is not where the story ends. After eight hours of continuous searching, the man could not be found, and the search that day was reluctantly called off. Unable to just sit by whilst he knew the lost man was still out there and not in good shape at all, Utzi took it upon himself and set out on the same hike to try and find him. After backtracking to where he was the previous day, Utzi located the man for the second time and immediately called the authorities. Around four to five hours later, rescue crews were on scene. One member of the rescue crew described the lost man as near the end and it is reported that he went over a week without any food and managed to survive using his filtered water bottle in the creek nearby. The lost survivor is now recovering successfully in a hospital in Santa Fe. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.